Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. Today I'm here to talk about a phone that some people hate, some people like, and others don't really know why it exists and don't can't make sense of it because why in the world in the year 2022 would you make a phone that looks like the iPhone did six and seven years ago? There have been a lot of changes in the landscape when it comes to iPhones over the last couple of years. One of the big ones is they don't have this shiny little home button anymore, the Touch ID sensor. It doesn't have a 1080p screen. It doesn't have Quad HD Plus. It doesn't have 120 hertz refresh rate. It doesn't even start with 128 gigabytes of storage. It doesn't have 8 gigabytes of RAM or 12 gigabytes of RAM. There's a lot it doesn't have, but it's what's on the inside that counts, right? <laughs> uh, joke and not joke. But still, when it comes to this phone, a lot of the value is not something that people really place on specs, and it's not something people really place on it not having a gigantic screen. It just works, and it makes people happy because this phone, this design, a lot of people like it. And I think it's probably going to sell pretty well. It's funny, I just saw an article on the internet yesterday where it was people are making a big deal because Chris Evans, the actor who plays Captain America, just upgraded his iPhone 6S. He, presumably, I think he got an iPhone 13 Pro. I guess he couldn't wait a couple of months to get the 14. But apparently, he had been carrying that one along on life support for a long time. And I think that paints a really, really important picture. Not everybody cares about specs. Not every, everybody cares about having a phone with a 6.8 inch screen. Not everybody wants three cameras. Not everybody wants the latest and greatest. Most people look at a phone and see a communications device. They want something that's comfortable, familiar, that works, that's reliable, that doesn't cost a ton of money, and will work for years. Everything that's on this phone's resume that a lot of people won't talk about. There's a lot of people who review these phones, and even fans or not fans who talk about them who go, that phone's dirt, that's the worst phone of the year, it makes no sense. This phone makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot more sense than a $1,000 phone, I gotta tell you, <laughs> for most people. I, I like having big, expensive $1,000 phones. I love my S22 Ultra. If I were to choose between these two phones, likely it would be this one. But that's me. I'm a tech enthusiast. I like having the latest and greatest. I want to play Apex Legends on a big, gigantic screen. I want all that stuff. That's cool with me. And then some other people are like, I want to spend 200 bucks for a phone. And I want it to work for three or four years. And this guy right here, $429 MSRP. But here's the beauty of it. A lot of carriers, you can actually get it for free if you upgrade or trade in your phone. And that goes back to what these phones are really designed for. And that goes to Apple's bread and butter. They want to get you in on a low price phone that is familiar, that gives you all the things that you want. Because there's people who are still using the original iPhone SE. And it's smaller than this. They skipped over on the iPhone SE 2020. That was too new of an upgrade for them. And now they're in the market for, got to have a phone with 5G, voice over LTE, some of these other niceties. This is it. So I think there's a lot of people out there that were happy when this was announced. And yes, they did cut production numbers on it. Not because it's not a good phone, not because it's probably not performing well. Samsung did the same thing. They had to cut theirs by 10%, and they're still going to end up with probably, I was reading an article the other day, like 40 or 50 million phones on the shelves because they can't move them. People aren't buying them. Right now, we're in an economic and global downturn. There's a lot of chaos that's been going on in the last two years, supply shortages, phone market saturation. I mean, being a phone manufacturer and distributor and seller and all that great stuff is probably a really stressful job right now. I'm, I'm just saying, give these people some, give them some prayers and comfort. This phone right here, though, I think it checks a lot of pe boxes for a lot of people. I've got my SIM card back in here. I do. I really enjoy this phone because it's it's an unpretentious phone. It's not like here, let me carry around this gigantic thing in my pocket. It's so nice grabbing it, using it one-handed, use my thumb, register my fingerprint with Touch ID. I think it takes pretty gar darn good photos. Yes, it's not the greatest camera in the world, but it's pretty good. And for what I do, just snapping a picture here and there, if I want to go out and do a photo shoot stuff, I'm not taking this with me. But most people aren't going out and trying to take pictures to make videos on the internet to show their YouTube subscribers how good the camera is. They just want to take regular shots. They just want to take a screenshot. They just want to do a selfie every once in a while. They just want to do a simple TikTok video, which mostly you can you can only upgrade, upload in 1080p anyway. I shoot videos in 4K on my Sony phone, and it's like, no, no, you can't upload that to TikTok. you got to have 1080p. So we're in a good place right now where I think this phone still makes sense for a lot of people. The battery life's even crazy improved over the iPhone SE 2020. The iPhone SE 2020 would give me about four and a half hours of battery time. And I've got over six with this one. 
It's got 5G, it's got voice over LTE, it's got really good signal. It's got the A15 Bionic processor. If you really wanted to, you could max out and play Apex Legends on here. You could pay, play Fortnite. You can play all these games. It's kind of hard to put your thumbs on this and hold it and play it because it's kind of a smaller screen. But it's great and it's perfect and ideal for children, for adolescents, for college kids who want a good phone that's reliable that won't break the bank. For the longest time... It was really hard for me to conceive in my brain, my little small myopic brain of tech stuff, when I would walk by and see somebody holding a phone that's four and five years old and how they're perfectly happy and content with that. I have to have the latest and greatest. I have to have a new phone every year. I'm always getting the new ones. And this is great. I have a, a YouTube tech outlet for this now. But before I was making videos, my wife thought I was crazy and really wasn't too wasn't crazy about my behavior of getting new phones all the time. And there are people out there who who live around phones. And that's fine. You can love and appreciate and be an enthusiast and a fanboy or a fangirl for your phones all you want. That That's great. Enjoy what you love. But most people aren't like that when it comes to phones, and they don't want to go spend $9.99 to get an iPhone 13 Pro that they don't need. They don't want to spend $7.99 and get an iPhone 13. They want something that has a, a Touch ID sensor on it. They still don't want to do face unlock with the face ID. They don't want all that crazy stuff. They just want something that works, that's reliable, that has all day battery life, and then some for even some normal people, like people who aren't like me who stare at their phone all day long. And I think this, this phone provides a lot of that. I think it checks a lot of boxes for the common man, and really people that get it are largely happy with it. And you know what you're getting. People who are tech enthusiasts like me aren't going to the store and saying, sign me up for an iPhone SE, that's what I want in my life. But it actually works really well for me because it allows me to do everything that I want to do. Small form factor isn't weighing my pockets down. And honestly, even with the 4.7 inch screen, I feel pretty comfortable using it. It's not something that really bothers me between looking at this versus this. I appreciate not having a big, gigantic half a pound brick in my hand. It's, it, it's something that it was very frustrating when this phone first came out. I knew there was going to be a lot of people that really weren't on board with it. But the reason I bought it was because I missed it. I, I miss having Touch ID. And honestly, if I could get an iPhone SE Plus, something more akin to the iPhone 8 Plus, which is was probably my most favorite iPhone of all time, I would love to have that. I like Touch ID. 5.5 inch screen, I think, is a good balance for a lot of people when it comes to an iPhone. And it had a bigger battery. It had the dual camera setup. If this had better cameras on it, I would totally rock this. If, if I could get the same cameras in here as the iPhone 13 mini, I'd be perfect. I would be set. It really wouldn't even bother me that much. So whenever it comes to this phone, I think it's a good phone. I think it's good for a lot of people. You get support. It's going to last for years and years and years. You're going to get all day battery life. You're going to have a nice experience. This is something that you look at and you go, okay, this is the modern version of what I've been using for years. If you're still using one that has a touch ID sensor on it, I doubt there's a lot of people out there that have an iPhone 12 Pro or an iPhone 13 Pro or an iPhone even 11 Pro. Or Pro Max saying, hey, I want to get this. There are different iPhones for different people. Someone, someone may look at this and go, you know what? I think that's a little too expensive for that phone, but let me get the iPhone 11 for about the same price. And that could be a good buy for you. That's what I like that Apple does now. I used to hate that Apple only had two models. That was it. You could get the regular one. You could get the Plus. Take it or leave it. And now they have the iPhone SE, the iPhone, the, like the mini, the, re the regular 13, the Pro, the Pro Max. They have the 12s from last year still. They still have the 11 on there. They have a lot of different models to choose from now. And despite the fact that there's so many models, this one's still going to sell about 20 million in the first year, like the first calendar year, 12 months of having this phone out. And that's spectacular. And a lot of people go, oh, nobody wants this phone. All of the S21 phones only sold about 21 million last year. So this little rinky-dink iPhone SE sold more or sold about the same as the iPhone or as the S20, S20 Plus and S20 Ultra. That's a big statement and context that I really help think helps put a lot of perspective on this. So, I think the phone's good. I enjoy using it. Again, my SIM card's back in it. I prefer this over my 13 Pro. If I did not make YouTube videos, I would not own an iPhone 13 Pro. I would not. I would just use this because an iPhone for me is exactly what kind of what I've talked about. It's just a carried around. I like my iMessage. I like to play the iMessage games with my kids because they like to play all those. I like having Apple Pay. I like having my Apple card that I can share with my kids and they can use it. There's a lot of different things on here that I really, really like. 
and you can use the Apple Watch. It get you can use AirPlay and transfer stuff straight over your tablet and your and your computer. So this is like the perfect iPhone for me, and I'm sure it's a perfect iPhone for probably about 20 other million other people out there. And that's okay. You don't have to go buy the Pro. You don't have to go buy the Pro Max. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. And this is going to last you for probably six or seven years, quite honestly. Their phones, they last for a long time. I think even up until recently, they were still supporting the iPhone 6S, which got the latest, I think it was iOS 15. It's just utterly crazy how long these things work. So this one with all the stuff in it, it's going to be working until the cows come home. So taking a look at it again, it's been out for a couple of months now. Kind of quiet on the iPhone SE front, but I know there's still people interested in it. A lot of people that still care about this phone. And there's going to be some decisions that need to be made because a couple weeks from now, the Pixel 6a is coming out. And that's going to be a really interesting phone too. I have the benefit of not caring whether I use an Apple phone or an Android phone. I like to use both. In fact, I like carrying both so much, I have two SIM cards. So it allows me to enjoy both platforms. I'm not like, no, 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 I hate that phone. It's got an Apple logo on it. I don't really like Apple as a business. Whole nother story, but I do appreciate what they do with their phones. And as a technology enthusiast, the things they do with some of their stuff is pretty miraculous. So that's all I've got. I'm going to sign off on this one. Hopefully this was helpful. If you're curious about them or you're interested in buying one or tired of hearing people talk down about it, maybe this gave you some confidence to help you out if you're looking in that department. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. I'm making them and dropping them every day. So if you're into that stuff and you like my perspective on tech, you're in the right place. So thanks a lot, guys. As always, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time to sit down and watch this and listen to me talk. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.